Hey okay, guys, it's time for your daily dose of Brood War. We've got Ruin here at the top left hand corner. Down at the bottom right, we've got Beol. Beol, the Terran player. Not to be mistaken with Beol, the Zerg player. I know Koreans are so creative with their names. They usually actually use their Korean names um, as their IDs, and then their IDs are kind of like secondary. Their gamer tags are kind of secondary to that. Um, so a lot of them, they don't put a ton of thought into things like shuttle or uh, larva or something like that. Just kind of random units from the game. I'm actually surprised we have never seen the Defiler. Like, who who's going to grab that name? I really feel like that would be a sick name to have. Um, it's just a sick name in general, honestly. But um, yeah, definitely like, like why, why pick shuttle? It's such a uh, non-cool name, you know what I mean? It's just not a very interesting one. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling here. We've got this game to take a look at here today with Ruin here, who's someone who's been a little bit overlooked as a Protoss pro. He's not someone we think about at the level of like a Mini or a Bisu uh, or a Snow, but or best, but he is a very strong player. He's been to a lot of ASLs. He hasn't gotten super deep, but he is growing in power. He's growing in strength. He's one of those promising ones. Not the promised one, maybe, but a promising one. And Biel here, he's been to a couple ASLs as well. Hasn't done quite as good, but you know, you never know what can happen in StarCraft. I, I didn't really expect, like, for example, Royal when he won his first ASL. I didn't expect JYJ to win his ASL. Uh, there's a lot of people who kind of came out of the left field, so to speak. And afterwards, everyone's going to, you know, Monday morning quarterback and be like, oh, yeah, of course he was going to win. Of course he was capable of winning an ASL, but a lot of people like to do that Monday morning quarterbacking doesn't mean that they actually knew at the time here we've got a dragoon coming out this is the first thing that's actually left rune space actually this probe right here coming to take the nexus so rune playing this style where you don't go for any early pressure until you get this goon out no zealot no probe getting in there and like harassing the SCV or anything he's just waiting on this first goon and he's not even going to build a second goon here for a moment he's going to start his range and we might see like a three dragoon defense here he's going to send the probe to the bottom left dragoon to the top right and we'll see how long it takes to get that scout off i don't think you'll see it until the dragoon actually makes it down here and by that time, we should have a bunker up and prepared. We may even see a vulture out. He could have had a vulture out. Oh, he does have one. Okay. So he's got a vulture out here. It's a little bit dangerous now. Because we still haven't scouted. The second dragon's going to come out. Hopefully, it parks right there on the ramp. But if the SCV is running around in the main and the dragon decides to chase it, we could end up seeing some damage come from this first vulture. Chase the SCV. He gets that pretty quickly. And we'll be able to bring the Dragoon to the front of the ramp here. No bunker right now. And the Vulture's going to come up from behind. He's microing very nicely these uh, Marines. As he's trying to deal a little extra damage with the Vulture. He does take some hit point shots there. Does take a little bit of hit point damage on that Dragoon. So not a, a great trade here for a Protoss player. The Marines are completely expendable at this point. He's still not even building that bunker, which is kind of crazy. But being able to cut that, it, it makes a difference. It really does make a difference in how fast you can get out this next factory or an armory, if that's what you want to do, um, or a starport, if that's the direction you want to take this game. But he's managed to cut that here. And he's not going to be punished for it either. Going up to three gate here. After the fact. Observatory on the way. So just three gate goon with observer. Now this is something you don't really want to attack into. Uh, in the early game. This is a, a very safe way to play. 
because you're just going to have a massive number of goons out. You're going to have observers very, very quickly. This is not something where we can actually leverage, you know, our early mines or anything to try and, like, run up and bust open the front here. Even with, like, three tanks and some marines pushing, and I see he's not building any more marines, so it's kind of unlikely that he's going to push the issue here, try to go across and probe the, the front. But he still might do it. I just feel like... When you don't see any more marines being built, it's unlikely. Third tank is about to pop. We're about to find out. Is he actually going to go for this little probing push? Or will he just hang back? He's going to see the observer as the dragoons clear out this mine. And their vulture heading out on the map. I don't have any mines left over here. He's laid them everywhere to try and slow down the expansion timings here of ruin and he's done a reasonable job thus far but that third base will come down and just constant dragoon production here i say that none of these are working right now but he's got three dragoons here in the main going directly to a citadel so he won't see a reaver at least not yet and i mean just more and more units gonna come out here for ruin as so far in this game, he's just gone complete safety. Vying for that late game. Or at least a, a very strong mid game here. The Citadel is a little bit interesting. He wants to get Zealot speed, I guess. I doubt this is for Templar, although that might be the case. Are we going to go really fast? Storm here? That's a possibility. No, Stargate. Right into Arbiter, it looks like. We should be seeing that. Uh, Templar Archives, yeah. So, right into Arbiter off of 3 base. This is like the older way of playing, honestly. This is like... One of the most basic ways of playing Protoss that you'll ever see. If you guys are... Playing on ladder, if you're trying to start with Protoss... Which is the race I would recommend that you start on if you're going to start playing Brood War. Um... It's just the 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 easiest race, I think, to just learn initially. Um, this is the build that you should be copying. Get out your early Dragoons very, very quickly. Uh, go to 3-gate. Make sure you have enough just pure army with Observers to deal with any sort of early push. You can just easily overwhelm it. All you need to do is control your Dragoons. You get your third base up in good time, keep pumping probes, and go directly into Arbiter, and you should be really, really safe throughout the game, and you'll at least get to this point, which is the move-out timing here for the Terran player. Relatively unscathed, I would say. Terran is now going to move. I guess he's going to take the third base here. He's gone up to five factories. So there is the potential for a push, although it is feeling a little bit late at this point. I'm not sure. Does he have an armory? He does. Armory here. Making those upgrades. Now, I'm a little bit surprised. One thing that I've seen out of a lot of really good Terran players lately is that on this map, the Terran players will put their tanks right along this ridge. They'll put tanks right here and right along here. So if you're trying to come across this uh, or come over this high ground, the tanks can really shell you all the way as you're running in and coming in this way. And then any army that tries to run in this way is going to get shelled by these tanks over here. So they kind of spread out in this direction like that, utilizing the walls very, very well. So uh, we're not actually seeing that out of Biel here. Maybe he's not hip to that meta. Um, it is a relatively new map. This is a very, very recent game, guys. So... These players have probably been playing on this map quite a lot since it came out at the beginning of the season. And yeah, it's just an interesting note to see that uh, Biel is not taking advantage of that. He's kind of spreading out um, in a more normal way, like not really abusing the map features here. This is how you would generally take a base if you're just going to be, you know, spreading your tanks and going ahead to grab this base. Also, we see a lot of players do a supply depot wall here as well. 
Uh, that might be coming a little bit later, but the third base is up. It's pre-11 minutes, so we're feeling pretty good here as Terran. Uh, I didn't see a starport, so the starport is going to be fairly late, which means it's unlikely we're going to have a good plus two timing going. I might lose one Dragoon here. It's a little bit unfortunate, but it does clear out all of the Vultures and... I think maybe one probe total was lost there. Another base down in the bottom left. We are going to finally see the Arbiter come out. Stasis field will be the first research. And plus one air weapons. Now this is not necessarily for the Arbiters. Um, I have heard of people to go like really heavy into Arbiters. And <laughs> actually utilize their attacks. It's not very strong. But this is more so for a future transition. Do we have... Yeah, okay. We've got Stargates. We've got a Fleet Beacon. So this is for that later transition. A second Cybernetic Core as well. It's a hard right turn into a uh, Carrier at this point. He is going full on into Carrier with double upgrades at all at the same time. Three Stargate Carrier. He's going to use the Stasis to kind of delay things. Uh, use his standing army to slow down the Terran player as he's taking his fourth. As he's slowly spreading out and getting up towards max. We are going to have recall available as well. But this is a carrier game here. He will be switching into these carriers relatively soon. We've got the base up here at the 12 o'clock. That's naturally mining now. Oh, probes are going to get caught here heading down towards the bottom left. That's a little bit unfortunate. Losing some probes at this point. I'm going to lose quite a few of them, unfortunately. Um... Down to just 60, but 60 is still a pretty good amount. Not even maxed out right now. He's actually got a whole ton of open supplies. So if there was a push from Terran right now, it would be very scary. But the longer he waits, and the longer we go without scanning, the worse this is going to get for him. I'm going to quickly turn off the... Uh, vision here of Protoss for a moment and we'll see when a scan actually goes down and he he sees that there are carriers being produced we've got some guys coming two three four five six seven eight nine nine factories here i still don't see oh there's the science facility so he gets the science facility he just now started 2-2 so still a long way off of 2-2 here all right we'll bring up the Protoss player again I should really do that more often, actually. Remove the other player's vision so we can really see what their view looks like on the map. Clearing out some mines up here in the top right. Army moving through the middle. You can see he's being very uh, aware of where the Terran army is and when it's going to start to push. He's probably counting his lucky stars right now. Like, man, this Terran player really doesn't want to push me, does he? He's taking his sweet, sweet time over there. Developing an army, getting ready for his eventual push out. But look at how many gateways we've got. Finally, a scan comes down in the main. He sees the carriers are uh, underway here. None of them have popped out yet, so it's a perfect time for the scan. The scan could not have come at a better time here. This is exactly when we should be pushing out. Right as the carriers are first starting to increment out of these Stargates. This is the opportunity... Is he going to start this push now? We've got some Templar as well with Storm. He's had so much time to develop. He's even got Storm. He's got Arbiter. He's got Storm. He's got Carrier. Every single tech here is available to the Protoss player. Everything, I guess, except for Reaver and Speed Shuttle. But he's got so many different tools to slow this down. I don't know if we're going to be able to push across, especially if we're sieging up uh, so defensively here as Biel. Biel moving forward. He's got to be careful not to stack up too much. This could be an amazing storm. Nice target. Ooh, EMP goes down, but misses the Arbiter here and the Templar as well. Both get their spells off. Well, this Arbiter hasn't got his spell yet, but the storm did go down. It wasn't the greatest storm in the world, but here comes Biel. Biel. Very scary right now. We do not have enough for EMP on either of these. He can come forward. Ruin can. And just get amazing, amazing stasis here. 
I don't know why he's going for stasis on these uh, science vessels. That doesn't seem like a great idea, but he does go for them nonetheless. He actually stasis is uh, quite a few Goliaths here. Well, two at least. So there's only three Goliaths left. And the three carriers may be able to do something here. They might be able to slow things down a little bit. Yeah, gonna kill all of the Goliaths, looks like. And that's gonna force BL back. Which is gonna buy some very precious time here. For Ruin to do a couple things, right? He's gonna add gateways up here in the top right. He's gonna get another three carriers out here in a moment. He's already up to five. Six is about to pop. Army heading over towards the top right. Biel gonna take a base down here at the bottom center. But more storms coming down here. He can rotate with the small ground army. Try to deal some damage. All this is going on. Five carriers making their way down here. He's gonna be able to get some good damage on these tanks. Looks like he eats a big EMP. Okay, targeting down as many tanks as he can right now. Loses the pylon, so... Unfortunately, the cannons are going to be unpowered here for Ruin. Ruin trying to handle this attack on multiple fronts. A lot of tanks over here. If he just rotates this direction, he could kill like at least six, seven tanks before anything can happen to him. Arbiter in the mix, but it gets EMP'd and it will end up getting taken down. And that cuts off the pathway for Ruin to actually move over to this side and start to pick off these tanks, which is a big deal here. He cannot do anything about this attack right now. He's got a few Dragoons, but they're not going to stand much of a chance against pure tanks here. In a very nice position on the other side of the wall. Ground army moving through the middle, but the 12 o'clock has been taken. Oh, sorry, 6 o'clock has been taken, and he hasn't done anything about it just yet. I thought a ground army would be sent down there for sure, but he hasn't reacted to that just yet. Some more zealots are going to increment out here. They might be able to stop this, these tanks. Um, he's actually got some weird rallies going on right now. Some DTs are going to pop out. That might actually be able to stop it. Where do we have these carriers? There they are. Wow, the carrier fleet is getting insane. We've got eight carriers here. Did we lose a carrier? We've got six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine carriers. So I don't think we lost one yet. Nine carriers in the mix here. How are our upgrades looking? Ooh, a nice EMP goes down on that. Plus two, plus one. Oh, a recall over here looks like. Clears out the tanks over in the top right. So he's able to hold on to both the top right and the bottom left. This is kind of a winning scenario right now for uh, Ruin. If Biel doesn't get a handle on the situation here by... You know, diving on top of these carriers or just breaking through into the main base. He's going to be in a ton of trouble. Rotating around, just getting a bunch of kills right now. Rune doing a good job using the uh, high ground. But the interceptors are starting to get gunned down very quickly. Plus two is done. So he's losing a lot of these interceptors and he's having to rebuild a ton of them. Without too much income going on. Of course, he's still got the top right and bottom left, but the top center was killed. Now the center left is killed as well. His bank is dropping critically low here. I saw some harassment was going on down here at the 6 o'clock, but it appears like Biel has managed to clear that out. A mine connection here is going to be huge. It's like that mine didn't go off, but one of those did. Dealt a lot of damage to these tanks. Ground army here. Going to get surrounded. Templar gets picked off. And more carriers are out. The carrier number is getting crazy scary. We're at 11 now. 11 carriers and these bases around the map have not been dealt with. The top right has not been dealt with. Bottom left has not been dealt with. I know I keep repeating myself, but this is the key. This is the scary thing. As a Terran player, when the Protoss gets both main bases, it is so... So scary. It's so hard to deal with. You have to break one of these. Uh, and soon. But he hasn't been able to do that. And he's just funneling down here into the bottom left. Trying to take fights right now. But the carrier number is still very high. And so many Goliaths are going down here. Nearly for free. Only able to kill a few scant 
interceptors where there are millions more being produced here. 11 interceptors at a time are being produced right now. Diving on top of another carrier. He's almost got one, but can't quite push out. There's the first storm on the Goliaths. Really limiting their HP. Nice dodge back there. Only losing one Goliath to that storm. The carriers are just going to turn and move elsewhere. Maybe even rotate around this army. Try to hit it from another angle here. He'll probably come in from behind. Start to kill off some tanks and then open this up with his ground army. Ruin is doing a fantastic job, but you know what? Bial is getting kind of insanely big. He's got 6,000 minerals in the bank and he's almost maxed out right now. He's got so much money to work with. With that six o'clock base, he just has what seems like infinite minerals here. The carriers are starting to get a little bit low. Some of them are getting picked off. Well, not picked off, but just picked on. A little bit of damage here and there, a storm. I don't know what that was all about, but a storm does go off there. Some more tanks being picked off. Another storm that didn't really make sense, but a carrier does finally go down. We're down to 10 carriers now. Little victories here are going to matter very, very much as this game continues on. We're just about mined out here in the center right. Getting uh, actually pretty decent still here at the mineral only, and the six o'clock has a lot of minerals left. I'm not sure why all the SCVs aren't over there just yet. Uh, it seems like there's a bit of a mineral smoothing problem here for Biel, but he's dealing with a lot right now. He's trying to fight the carriers. He's trying to dodge the storms, and he's trying to attack up into top right at the same time. This is a great move. He's sending just small groups of army around the map, trying to deal damage while the carriers are being held down here in the bottom left-hand corner. It'll be hard for the carriers to actually go around. Oh, he gets one more carrier. Can he get another? Oh, it's so close. Oh, it's so close. He almost got this one. He will get it. Dropping down that carrier count to just eight. Eight carriers remain. Nice stasis here, just slowing down the killing of this base. I'd like to see him unseize. Just get in range of this Nexus. Put the pressure on that Nexus here. But he is dealing with a lot right now. He may end up losing six o'clock since his army to the south was broken. The lies here are trying to help out, but the CC goes down, and now it's actually... Oh, another carrier falls. Down to seven. More, I think, are popping out here. He's actually building Arbiters, which I'm a little bit surprised about. A lot of Arbiters in production right now. He spent so much to build up this army and get all these upgrades. He's 3-2 right now for air. That's going to be a very strong air army if he pumps out a few more carriers, but he's actually instead... Adding on a lot more ground army here. And just relying on the carriers that he still has left alive. Meanwhile, Biel. Long distance mining here from the 6 o'clock. He has 3k minerals in the bank and he's maxed. But his income is not very good right now. He needs to uh, take another base. Primar probably the 6 o'clock. I think that's what we're going to see him retake right now. As the army here moves northward. It's actually going to shove back all of these Goliaths because there's just no tanks with this army. Only two Goliaths up here at the top. Trying to pick off as many probes as he can before all these tanks are lost. So he was just a moment ago maxed out. But you can see his uh, bank as well as his supply drop dramatically here. And it's going to drop even further as all of these tanks get picked off basically for free. Although they did take a toll here in the top right-hand corner, killing off that Nexus. Didn't get every single probe there, but it'll still take some time to reestablish that base. Vultures here. Doing a little harassment into the natural. This is a great play by Biel to just get in here, start to lay some mines on top of the rally point. Has a pretty decent tank force actually pushing forward. This CC is not really worth the time of day here. It'll take for uh, Rune to cut through all the turrets and stuff over in that area. Meanwhile, Vulture's laying down mines and then going to work on these probes. He actually just fought the cannon straight up. Now with 3-3, three, three, 
That's something you can absolutely do with the big group of vultures. So he kills the cannons. And he's going to kill almost every probe in this area. But his CC went down here at the center right. He needs another base down here at 6. So he's bringing down the CC to claim that location. And this is going to be the final mining base here for Biel. He's very low on gas right now. He's got still quite a lot of gas being mined here out of this base. But maybe just get all those SCVs to work. Long distance mining that gas might be the right option right now because he, he just needs gas so badly. He needs to build more Goliaths. Breaking his way down here into the bottom left though. There's not a lot of mining remaining down here for Ruin. He really needed this base uh, at the natural. But at the same time, he is retaking the base up here in the top right. And he's still got some probes over there to mine with. He's going to keep delaying Biel here, but he lost a lot of interceptors just now. So many interceptors went down, and his supply is not looking the greatest. Just going to hold position here. He knows that this is going to mine out soon. Holding position. A very strong spot here for all of his units, but a recall down into 6 o'clock. This is a huge recall. He's going to kill a lot of the remaining miners here. Uh, left over for Biel. Biel bringing his tanks around. Going to help him to clear this out. But I think with the carrier support, the CC will definitely fall. The 3-3 three, three carriers, man. They deal so much damage. And that goes down in just about a second. Uh, meanwhile, vultures make their way into the top right. They clear out all the remaining probes. So doing a good job of at least shutting down all the mining here. Of the Protoss, but dude, there is just nothing mining right now. Here for Biel, only these patches. That's all he has left. Maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand minerals left over here. And he's very low on that bank now. Does have 182 supply though. So uh, CC going to go up in the top right hand corner. And he's going to move to start to defend that location. Carrier's kind of chasing around vultures right now as they lay down mines. He could definitely break in here. Uh, that's not a lot of, uh, of goons. They do have plus three attack, but oh man, catching a lot of probes right here. This is a great catch. Where are these probes actually going right now? That's a little bit funny. They're just heading out. Heading down to the, or up to the top left. That was a little bit silly. Might as well have kept them down here. To keep that base mining, but instead he sends them out to their death. DT here, plus the five kill dragoon, looking to try and deny this base in the top right. But Biel is moving up here with a massive army right now. This is a scary, scary Terran force. And I don't think that really. Ruin has what it takes to, to, to fight that right now. This is so much mech. And it's 3-3. Three, three. We're going to take out... Oh my god, just take out the gateway, please. Okay, he's actually going to have to return uh, to the fight right now. Because this CC is going to go down in a matter of seconds. And where there's a real threat right now of Ruin going in. And actually taking over the factories right now. He could like fly right in here. Start killing all the turrets, start killing all the factories, um, get rid of the spider mines, and then recall into the main. And then things get really messy from there. Really, really messy. Now, it is a pretty well defended main. I've got to say, that's a lot of mines, a lot of turrets, but carriers just kind of change the math. When you've got this many carriers, and it's not actually that many anymore, we've got seven, an eighth one about to pop out, and ninth here as well. When you've got that many carriers, all the turrets in the world aren't going to save you. And, I mean, they will buy some time. But Biel's got to stay active. If he lets carriers fly into his main and start killing, or just kill off a bunch of his tanks, he's going to be in a lot of trouble very quickly. Tanks are going to start to get shot down here. They have to retreat. They need to re-siege, though, uh, and actually fight the ground army. The ground army is not that big right now, but it's a big threat with the storms here in the middle. We've also got some... Other spells here. Stasis comes down. He targets down the Arbiter in this fight. 
and the carriers are going to be next pushing forward here just pure goliath against goose but with only four goons remaining they really aren't that much of a threat it's all about the carriers here it's a great trade i feel overall from ruin he's killed a lot but are the carriers just going to be able to carry him here over the finish line is constantly trading out here just hold position all of the the dragoons waiting for an overextension here from the goliaths he's got one more storm remaining now this base went down again i guess the vultures getting in there dealing that damage killing off that base we've got some more cannons over here not a lot of mining going on for ruin right now but similarly not a good amount of mining going for Bial either he's basically one basing it right now oh another great stasis we should have another storm here as well oh the storm's so brutal but there's only two dragoons left so the tanks aren't really gonna matter it's all about the goliaths fighting the carriers right now I'm gonna pick off that templar trying to push forward here with the goliaths he just can barely not get on top of this and i'm afraid we're gonna see the carriers come up here and just try to gun down the cc if they kill that cc and deny mining oh man it could go down so fast guys maybe he doesn't need to maybe he can just fight the goliaths here and still be okay shooting down a lot more of these goliaths they're being pushed back further and further right now the gas count is the real problem suddenly a lot of glass unthaw and he tries to push forward here another arbiter coming forward if he drops two stasis on here just two stasis one two there it is he gets it only two goliaths are left over that was the clutchest arbiter ever he's gonna kill all of the remaining goliaths and goes right after the cc here this cc is not long for this world look at how quickly it dies to the three attack of the carriers and that is the last remaining mining gone for Bial and gg is called what a clutch move there at the end from ruin utilizing that tech that he'd had in the back pocket forever finally getting the money stasis here to end this game these goliaths were preventing him from taking out this base there were slowly gunning down the interceptors and threatening to dive on top of his units but he brings forward that last arbiter and he's just kind of enjoying his victory here at the end but that's it he taps out he leaves the game gg ruin takes this one away pretty incredible game here honestly though this was a great one uh, i really felt like buell had a pretty reasonable position but it's so hard to win when your opponent has multiple main bases like they've got uh the main base here and the main base across the map over here he did manage to clear this out and he was looking pretty strong unfortunately he built the cc here uh rather than up here it would have been a lot harder to get on top of that um it was still pretty defendable though just the trading constantly from ruin very very annoying sniping ccs everywhere the recall down here at six o'clock shutting down that base and the constant expanding even though y'all was very active with shutting down bases all over the map ruin was relentless in just taking more and more bases and just continuously shuffling probes around and adding on more cannons and just getting an income wherever he could to keep this interceptor count alive because that was the real trouble here is if he fell too low in the income that he wouldn't be able to produce interceptors and then Biel would just be able to shoot them all down with his Goliaths we're never going to actually catch these carriers you know floating over top of these high ground areas and just being a nuisance you're never going to actually jump on top of them and just kill them all it's really about the numbers game, the money game of actually shutting down the interceptors and killing them off while shutting down bases and cutting off that income. But he's never able to do it efficiently enough. And Ruin, really impressed by his play as well. Um, he had so much time though. I think Biel gave him a little bit too much leeway, a little bit too much leg room in this game. 
that allowed him to go into so many different techs and it's very very difficult to beat a protoss player who has storm arbiter recall stasis carriers with three three how are you supposed to take that on in the late game um with just pure mech i guess there doesn't really seem to be a great answer um one big moment that I didn't really highlight was when the carriers came out and killed all of the science vessels. There was like one big fight where all the science vessels died to the carriers and it's almost impossible to keep the science vessel alive when the carriers are in the fight because they just target them down so incredibly fast. Yeah, it's very, very tough to keep them alive and you really do need EMP to deal with the Arbiters. You need the EMP to deal with the Arbiters. You need the Goliaths to deal with the uh, Carriers. And you need the Tanks and Vultures to deal with the Ground Army and the constant harassing Templar. They're going to be throwing down storms every which way. It's not an easy battle. But Biel not able to take this one home. I'm looking for... I, I don't know why Ruin has been kind of overlooked. I, I think that Ruin is a great player. Maybe I'll look for more replays of him let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see more replays of ruin guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one